Okay, it should be recording now. Um, so yes, uh, I'll share my screen and share a very short presentation with all of you. Um, please feel free to interrupt and jump. This is not really thought as a presentation, but really as a basis for a discussion here. Um, but because I won't be able to see your face, just unmute yourself and jump on, basically. Um, let me... Okay, go into full screen mode. Um, so yeah, today we're gonna talk about specs update. Um, so finally, the governance of the spec has been blocked as we've announced a few months ago. Um, so we're finally able to do this work. Um, the last release of the spec was in 2016, uh, I think, if can correct me if I'm wrong. So it's high time uh, that we, uh, we do an update and that has been requested also from the community for a very long time. Um, just some key facts about this uh, project. It will be um, done together with a multidisciplinary working group. Um, so we've been in contact with some of you already that are on this call, uh, but of course, like um, people are really free if they want to be in that working group to contact me or Evgeny um, so that we can see um, and we can make you join. Um, the duration of the project in total would be more or less four months. And the deliverables of this project are restricted by a grant that we got from NLNet. So this work uh, is possible also thanks to their generous contribution. Um, here are some things that we would like to do. Um, we have, well, we have, Evgeny mostly has uh, listed all the issues that we have uh, on the specs or issues that are already existing, uh, issues on which there has been a discussion inside the community and this will be the starting point really um, that will guide our work. Um, starting from there, we will make some propositions um, and then um, of course we'll be working with the working group as well uh, to see how to prioritize stuff uh, and also like how to move things forward. Um, the expectation is to release a version two of the specs by February, 2024. Um, we have, of course, an improved website and improved documentation with more accessibility as well. Um, this is just something that Evgeny posted in the, in the community chat, uh, and I thought it was nice to bring it back here as well. It's a slide from a presentation that Keith gave uh, in April. Um, there's a link actually to that community call. Um, and um, Keith made some very useful proposition already on how we could do that. Um, so I think that we're going to take a lot uh, of those advice. So uh, possibly meeting around once a month with the working group, um, trying to make the working group as diverse as possible. Um, we have a backlog of specs issues. Um, the one that I showed before, I can paste the link afterwards in the chat. Uh, there's a number of topics that we need to discuss, of course. Um, and um, did someone want to say something? No? Um, and yeah, so um, that's basically more or less the way that we're going to move on. So thanks, Keith, actually. <laughs> you already sort of like outlined all the work um, for us. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, some of the things that we really wanted to discuss with you all today, and of course, we're open to discuss other stuff as, as well, is um, so we already have some people that volunteered from this group uh, to be part of that working group. Um, and we wanted to explore if it, there was anyone else who would be interested in joining us, uh, maybe discussing some of the rules. Um, the way that we thought with Afghan is that uh, we will try to build uh, inside Open Knowledge Foundation a kind of like governance for this. Um, but then, of course, we can get some input on how that should work from all of you. Um, and also making decisions on very specific stuff, like when will we merge something? Do we vote on it? Do we try to get to a quorum uh, and this kind of things? So, um, yeah, maybe we can start the conversation from here. If anyone has anything to add also other questions, uh, please write them in the notes. Um, yeah, let's open the table to discussion. Keith, yes. First off, this is great. Um, really excited to get started with this. So thanks for moving forward. Um, two initial thoughts. First is 
do you have like a high level view of what your goals are for version two? Like if there was only one thing that you wanted to achieve with the next iteration, uh, what would that be or some small number? Or is it completely open and you just want to figure out what we need to do and then go from there? And then I guess the second thing I was going to mention along the lines of diversity, uh, I noticed, you know, today in particular, but other days as well, it's pretty male dominated. And I mean, I think it's unfortunately part of the nature of just like tech work in general. Um, but it would be good to actively try to make it less biased so that we just have better representation when we're thinking about things. I mean, for many questions in the metadata, it might not matter too much, but still, the, the more perspectives we have, the better. Absolutely, very fair point on diversity. I let maybe Evgeny speak on the more on the vision, um, but diversity, of course, um, we try to be mindful of trying to put as many diverse people in, knowing also and being mindful of what the starting point is, which is something very close to this call as well. Uh, but absolutely, we'll strive to make it as diverse as possible. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So regarding uh, the goals, first of all, yeah, we here right to discuss this, but uh, our current vision is uh, so a little bit of background. So what we had a previous version, version one of the specs, we had uh, more like closed working group for it. And within this working group, we basically um, went to, you know, decisions, which was, you know, mostly like kind of like programmed by uh, previous leads of the projects. So it was like more just uh, getting approval of their vision for this work. Uh, we want to go. Uh, not, we want to go like the opposite direction. Specs are already more or less established, but we have many, many, mostly like small things. For me, it's kind of like the most uh, well-known, like um, missing values for a field or like unique constraint for a table or something like this, uh, which uh, currently on the version two milestone on GitHub, but this list is open. And uh, we just like to follow any decisions made by uh, the working group we form now. And uh, okay. as open knowledge, we will try, you know, not have any bias on any decisions here, just participate. In general, um, yeah, so also I think there is a kind of like for now, to uh to level governance system currently uh project is governed by open knowledge so we will work we were working on getting this grant to uh boost up the work this work but it will be great first of all uh we'd like to open knowledge would like to fully uh delegate all the decisions on exact on, on specs itself to the working group we're forming now and maybe it's a long shot, but I think it will be great if we can form uh, in the end of the project, we can form like, you know, uh, kind of like persistent decision making for, for, for the standards like going forward. So if, for example, there is working group and all, all, all new changes can, can be made only uh, by, by the working group, group approval or something like this. Okay, that sounds great. Thanks for the overview. Thank you. Thanks, Keith, for the questions. Peter, I think you were next. Yeah. There, would you want to stop sharing your screen just so we can see each yeah, other? Yeah, sorry, that's a very excellent idea. Let me just do this. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, give me one sec. Everyone's eager to see how Augusto's beard's doing. Okay. Is, it, is it growing? Possibly. <laughs> yeah, I wrote down a couple of questions. One is, um, yeah, it, it's a very valid question what the overall view is, especially within the project or the grant that you have and what you need to actually achieve within the four months. Because I think getting to a new version two in four months to me sounds extremely fast. And it, it depends a bit 
like like what your goal is like going to a 1.1 version uh like a next minor release in four months that seems doable but like breaking changes major version with lots of testing that seems very fast so chipping away at the whole list of issues in the milestone that seems doable as a like a goal like let's we have this funding now let's make sure that we can do this have a committee to like uh pinpoint ideas see if it is uh workable but yeah i'm a bit afraid with this v2 that is indicated like what is the goal there and also i have not seen keith's vision presentation yet that was just shared i'll, I'll have a view of that and i don't know if that is a, a major breaking change to how things are done so yeah i'm curious is it chipping away at the issues and like doing the backlog or is it having a brand new vision of how the the specs v2 would look like uh, yeah i think i'm going to answer and yeah also i think i uh missed also uh the main point uh, we would like to achieve we'd like to uh, of course also we, we need to discuss it we'd like to make a data package more like a finished uh, standard uh probably like data package, not frictionless data specs or whatever. So having it as like more JSON schema or JSON LD or something a uh, little bit separated. And uh, and for version two, the main goal is to like make what we have now as a finished product. So we don't have any uh, goals to, you know, to finish uh, like five issues, or like 10 or 15. Uh, it will be great if you can, you know, if you can make it look like a like finished standard, and then we can, you know, we can continue, uh, we can decide what's uh, the like changing uh, specs rules, how we can continue working on it. But uh, currently as uh, uh, it's now GitHub started using uh, specs as a data package for their work and as a part of this grant and uh we might have a kind of like really exciting cooperation really soon uh also touch uh, uh attached to xenodo and also part of this grant is uh, proposing uh data package as a uh, ex uh, export format for xenodo and secan so yeah it be limited by the uh, grant deliverables and timeline so uh whatever we have time to decide to include in this change will be there and also i think it's a kind of like a big rule of data package there is no breaking changes so i think it's uh, basically like uh, out of scope so uh, for implementations like new futures are uh, kind of breaking changes but at least there is a rule that we don't change anything that can uh, break existing uh, implementations um so yeah, if it makes sense so, so do I understand correctly this responding to the fact that the data package spec were put out there in 2016 and were taking up but now it is really getting used more and more as a standard and it's kind of its own landing page and uh, like all the like to, to really make this like a, a, a product or a standard in it, in its own with, with the related things to work towards that and any uh, user requests are on the github issues to maybe address those if uh, if if it is possible I, i'm just curious with the with the grant you have uh, what are the real deliverables that need to be done within four months and what can be done later um yes yeah, so i'm uh, i of course can share it so probably not the exact like MOU assigned to the LNET, but uh, in high level uh, grant has three parts. First part is a new uh, Python, small Python library that will be uh, only metadata mapper with no dependencies. Currently, I think based on like newer technologies like Pedantic or something to just provide a model for data package and moreover to provide a simple way to uh, create extensions which is was a lot of men mentioned uh, in the keep sw uh, slides uh, simple way because current technologies in Python at least 
uh, provide a lot of ways to do like simple metadata extensions uh, with all the validation, etc. And uh, this metad metadata mapper is, is first, and this mapper will be used to propose uh, to seek any Zenodo uh, like data package as a, a kind of like one of the four exports formats, kind of like data API. I think it will be called something like this, like in informal way. Uh, and uh, and the deliverable number two is going through this uh, list of issues, proposing solutions, deciding on what possible to decide based on the timeline and incorporating it uh, into the uh, spec stacks, also technical language improvements and a new new website for for data package because the current one is not not really you know with good navigation and all this stuff which is uh, honestly is uh, already like partially done but it's, it's we can't yet share it but it's 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 way more exciting than what we have now um Sarah, can you decide? Yes. Um, I don't know, Augusto, you go first, and then Peter, I think you were after. Actually, I had a simple question because uh, in the spec site, I sent a link in chat, there's a page um, that lists some patterns of using uh, data packages, of using the specs to things like. Uh, language support and translation of data or versioning and several others. And at the top of that page, it says, um, if you see increased adoption or wide support for any pattern, it's a prime candidate for formalizing as part of a specification. And I, just, I was just wondering if um, in this uh, specs revision process, uh, any there's any special uh attention to the page to the patterns list in that or, or also uh if in the new version uh, how will other will other patterns we will we need another set of patterns that will be to be compatible with the new specs will this need to be revised how are you thinking of uh, of fitting the, these uh, two parts, the main specification and the patterns in the new version. Mm, I think, um, uh, like exactly as it was, I think designed by Rufus. That, for example, I would suggest for myself. I would suggest, for example, unique constraint pattern to go to the like the main specs. Uh, so usually as a like, obvious uh, candidate, but uh, if it's accepted, uh, it can go there. But uh, I think it's uh, really depends on, uh, as you said, uh, like champs or uh, people who would like to from working group would like to promote uh, any of these uh, patterns. But of course, uh, they are primary candidates, as you said. Uh, yeah, sorry, Peter. Yeah, just curious on this working group. I mean, I'm I'm interested to join, but yeah, this would have to happen in between all the other projects that I'm doing. So I'm curious about the workload. Is it more a central team that is going to tackle it technically and then have... How do you... Yeah, I'm curious, how do you like the frictionless core team see this work and what would be the, the workload for the more like remote participants to uh, to this to this work um yeah obviously it's a uh, voluntarily work so uh i think the fair plan and what we have uh, in the internet brand but uh basically as a uh, open knowledge representative i will be creating basically i'll be creating proposals for a review just proposing things and uh, waiting for like uh, comments which is of course uh, not obligatory based on everyone's uh, 
own uh, capacity, etc. And uh, if we get uh, so, so yes, one of the uh, proposals of this meeting to decide how we how we decide. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, in general, yeah, if it's a is the change approved again, it will be uh, incorporated based uh, uh, based on the uh, the funding from 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 the grant also by open knowledge. Yeah, and in my head, it makes sense that all the technical machinations of how the spec is maintained and how it is built to the website, I, I don't think many people need to be involved in, in that. I mean, there can be uh, input there, but yeah, any changes to the spec, I'm really happy with a review approach um, and that you try to have a certain consensus or at least some core members that you know, okay, well, we need to thumbs up for at least four people of a group of uh, six, like, yeah, that have, have a certain consensus and because it's all going to be voluntary, like so sometimes maybe ping certain people uh, to know, hey, are you still participating in this? Is this a blocker for you or is it because you currently don't have time? But yeah, I would say that any changes to the spec itself have to go to review while any changes on how the spec is technically maintained probably don't but that's just my opinion but in general what's uh like uh, like this uh what is perception of this idea that the uh, data package in becoming kind of like a more standalone standard is it does it make sense <laughs> Well, in a sense, yes, because you kind of need a, I mean, if you're talking to somebody, I mean, I have this with Chemtrap DP, if you're talking to somebody who is completely new to frictionless standards, just the word frictionless standards and the fact that it's plural can be a little bit confusing. Um, if you say it's a frictionless data package and they have a landing page for that, and then explaining it is consistent of modular approach and you have the schema there of there's table schema, there's data package, there's data resource. And I, I find that most people gravitate toward table schema because they, they kind of want to say, oh, yeah, I know a spreadsheet. And yeah, okay, you want to express that a certain way and then expands from that to data package. So yeah, it's sometimes difficult like to to throw them before like all the different specs that, that you have. And yeah, data package as an entry point is a useful one. Um, but you also still need the landing pages for all the other things too, because very often, like in the paper I wrote on Chemtrack EP, I, I, I introduced it a bit generally, but then I really wanted to point to table schema because that's the most important one for us. Um, so having those landing pages, you're going to have many entry points still, even though you kind of want to make data package like the main one. That's my uh, experience so far. Yes, uh, yes, sorry, sorry uh, Carl, just a small comment. Uh, yes, so, 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 so in general, yes, uh, also regarding like, you know, it's open source, all this funding maintenance, uh, at least I'll feel more like secure about uh, data package, slightly detached from frictionless, because frictionless is basically software implementations, many software projects, which requires a lot of funding, etc. And it will be great to have like data package as just a finished uh, standard which uh, uh, in, in the bad, bad case scenario, it, it doesn't require like a lot of maintenance, et cetera. So, it, so for example, the good example, maybe not good, but CSV on the web was, you know, written like six years ago and it's it's done. It's it's a good or bad, but it's uh, it's a standard. So uh, we don't want, we don't want to, you know, have this uh, go this, uh, but, but uh, at least it's, it's good to have finished thing that can be used by, uh, others yeah sorry Kyle yeah thank you I think I think having the uh data package as a as a separate um <clears throat> like I'm I, if I'm understanding what you're saying correctly it sounds like you would spin off the the metadata aspects of the um frictionless framework into a frictionless uh metadata package framework or something like that am, am I understanding that correctly Sorry, I lost my internet for a second. 
Oh, sorry. I, I was saying, is it, um, am I understanding it correctly that you're saying that you're, you're, you're wanting to spin off the, the metadata aspects of the frictionless framework into its own package and then, and have that be a standalone um, thing without all of the pipelines and validations and, and like manipulation aspects. And then you could build that up in um, uh, these more uh, modern schema uh, model uh, libraries like Pydantic and, and things like that. Yeah, yeah, it's already started. Okay. It's uh, DP specs spy on, on the frictionless organization. So yes, it need to be like really lightweight metadata um, project that can be included in, for example, Xeno the code base without dependencies. <clears throat> gotcha. Yeah, because that's that's mainly. Uh, so I would I would really like that. That's that's mainly how I'm using the frictionless framework. Um, anyway, I'm I'm doing all of my own data processing, and then I'm just uh, using uh, the the frictionless framework to um, validate the um, metadata that my package is exporting. Um, and so uh, ha having uh, kind of more ergonomic ways of incorporating extensions and and things like that would be really handy because I'm finding that I'm uh I'm I I end up at the end of the day I end up having to rebuild all of the frictionless um schema models in Pydantic anyway because that's that's what I'm um using so um I I would find that very useful if it was you know just just the metadata parts maybe some some more ergonomics around um uh you know sort of standard ways of of writing out packages and and things like that um uh, that 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 have the the data attached or you know, that maybe those are that that's getting too much into the weeds but um i think the general vision is something that i'm um that uh i'm very much on the same page for thanks Kyle um Dan you had a question just kind of want to strongly second all this. I think just in terms of even communicating to people I work with, like, I don't know, it's just having less of a hierarchy of branding and, you know, kind of having the concepts of frictionless and the data package more in parallel than um, having to be like, well, it's the frictionless from OKFN and the data packet. Like, yeah, it, it would just kind of be, I just think it would make a lot of things easier to communicate about, which may seem trivial, but I think often is not. Um, yeah, unfortunately, regarding frictionless data, I think it's kind of like in my eyes, it's you know kind of like collaborative hub of different people working on software. But regarding uh, kind of like explaining frictionless data, it was always a problem, and I think the the last uh, situation that we still not decided how to uh, call our tag on a stack overflow frictionless or frictions data <laughs> so maybe yeah maybe it's this like name is not perfect for presenting something other comments or questions or things that you would like to bring up yeah peter yeah just curious on the feedback you maybe have on like the governance of how you want to tackle this work. Um, like what approach, the, the review approach, the monthly meetings, um, just like the social aspect of like getting it done. Yeah, so I think that the way that we were thinking about it was having some kind of like community, well, not well, working group calls, let's say, which are not compulsory, of course, so everything would be documented as well somewhere. Uh, it is possible, as you were suggesting as well, since, of course, people don't have a lot of time to have a so, so kind of like asynchronous way of working on things, uh, especially if we're working towards a kind of like review model. That's definitely possible. Uh, but yeah, something that we can explore all together, actually, what would work better for you, actually, that's that's also like part of the, part of the reason of the things that we would like to explore. Yeah, we'll see. Well, um, I know we have uh, Slack for our discussions, but there's also a tool from Open Knowledge Foundation that has been a little bit underused, which is the Discourse Forum. 
Uh, we have a sub forum on frictionless there. The, the last post there was more than a year ago, I think, or so. Uh, no, not, not so long. But uh, what I think uh, is, I'm sending the link in the chat. Um, what I think is useful there is to, like, when you have a topic, you can have it uh, fixated and it always appears. Uh, and like, for instance, you could have the current version being discussed there and be always editing that. And maybe the flow of discussion there, you can use hearts or thumbs up or something like that for voting on changes. Of course, you could use the Slack as well, but uh, I, I think uh, that is worth considering as well. Yeah, thanks. That's a good point, actually, Augustin. I think that in a way, if we use something like the discuss forum, that would also preserve a little bit more the discussions that tend to be a bit lost after a while uh, in Slack. Um, the other option would be, of course, to use GitHub issues, um, but maybe we can use both. Yeah, I mean, personally, I would prefer not too many platforms because if, uh, yeah, I mean, I like just following GitHub issues because you can be a lurker until you're like, oh, wait, what, what, what is happening here? And then you can react. Um, but I think it really depends on the type of discussion. If it's a discussion that is like issue bite-sized, as in we would like to expand, that's one of my issues, role to an array of roles rather than a single role. It's pretty bite-sized. That is something you can discuss in an issue for larger discussions, but I also don't know if this is going to happen within this project in a, in a larger group. For, for that, you need like a, a conversation like we're having right now. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's also good in a GitHub issue to say, yeah, let's stop here. I think we need to discuss this more in, in, in person. Let's try and have this on our next, I don't know, two weekly or monthly call to see if we can figure it out. Um, that's at least what I did for Camtrap DP. We like, there's a much wider community of, let's say, 30 to 60 people who are watching the repository and providing input sometimes. And then there's a much smaller core group who kind of makes like the bigger decisions. But what is very useful, I think, for the, the larger group is to kind of see what the roadmap is to see, ah, yeah, you haven't forgotten about this one, but kind of want to tackle this first and then that. So having even just a, a blog post, for example, with the over parking goal, like this is what we want to do. Um, this is the part where you as a community can contribute to this part. We're going to, to tackle this. Um, just having this, like the beginning of this, uh, this, this call here, just knowing what the overall goal is. Like, yeah, we kind of want to make data package its own standard, just like GeoJSON is its own standard with its own website. And these are all the elements we want to bring over like having that as the baseline. And that is what we need to deliver by February. Just having that publicly available somewhere is, is great. And then, and we want you to participate specifically on the issues here in this milestone. Uh, I think that that could be useful to also know I should not be involved in this discussion because that's another thing. Like there's like such an overload of information sometimes that it's sometimes difficult to know what is now the important parts that I can contribute to. Yeah, very fair point. And I think that definitely we can write a blog or have a place where everything is enshrined and people can just go and have a look. So uh, yeah, Keith, you had the proposed uh, question. So a couple comments. First, I just want to um, follow up with what Peter was saying and completely agree. Like, I think four months is not a huge amount of time. We can definitely get some things done and even perhaps the goals that you set out to do. 
but it's probably more important to use the time to set up like a sustainable structure and governance. If we can just get that right, then that's gonna be way more impactful than what you actually do in that four months. Um, there are models in open source communities and maybe even da data standard communities that we could look to for guidance and ra rather make the same mistakes that other did try to learn from that or talk to people. Um, so that's one thing I was gonna say. The other thing that comes to mind, I think that could be good to start to think about and do kind of collectively early on is to maybe construct a test or, or reference collection of data types that we want to support and create like a GitHub repo where we can literally just have files of all the different types. And that'll give us perspective on like, what are the overall goals? And we can start to write tests around them, incorporate them into examples and all kinds of things. But first, just knowing, like, what do we actually want to do? What do we want to support? And if we add something, we realize, hey, like the way that things are structured, where it's very table focused, are, are not going to work with this model. It'll help us early on to think through what kind of changes we need to work towards. Yeah, thanks, Keith. Uh, Evgeny, do you want to react to that? Um, yeah, I just wanted to add that, yeah, as per the grant, uh, there is no requirement to like uh, finish five issues, 10 issues, or 15 issues. So we can definitely uh, use this time. If it's something not decided, we, we can definitely use this time to uh, create this uh, sustainable mo model for future uh, development of the specs. Hi. I think you were next, and then I was. Sorry, was that me? My my internet cut out. Oh yes. Uh, do you want to ask the question? Okay. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Um, I I love Keith's idea. Um, I think that would also be a a way to get some um uh more voices in on the discussion. I know I at, at a uh at a last data managers meeting for a bunch of educational and social science data managers um that that, that I'm a part of. Um, I I showed them frictionless and I, I just got a bunch of blank stares as to what it was and what it could be used for and none of them used Python and um uh they're they're not familiar with JSON schema formats and and so but but this would be a way that I feel like we could um like if if they could if they could if if we could get a working group of maybe non-software engineer but like data um like content specialists from a different field, a bunch of different fields and and try to put together like an exhaustive list of of you know just what are what are all the types that are out there that, that we're trying to support. I feel like that would be a really great um that, that that's something that I'm very much interested in. Yeah, that's exactly what Keith is proposing as well. <laughs> um Augusto, you were next. I would like to some consideration about uh, how do you think um, the frictionless framework uh, evolution fits with uh, in pace with the evolution of the specs uh, i think that of course there's the expectation that the framework should support the latest stable version of the spec but uh, speaking of uh, the next steps uh, when do, do you need to finalize the specs first and then follow up with the implementation of the framework or should the framework uh, lead the way with a reference implementation and then uh, we finalize the specs i just would like to give a concrete a concrete example like we have those patterns there that are out of the spec but are like recommended for us, us to use and in my use case, we had to publish open data uh, using data packages in two languages. There is a language pattern there, but as far as I know, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it supports uh, the friction. It's supported in frictions framework. So what I ended up doing is doing a different pattern of using uh, one data package metadata file in one language and a different file in another, another language Then that is perfectly supported by the current version of the framework. So uh, I'm just like to first to consider uh, how how we think 
uh, we are going to pace the evolution of both the framework and the specs. No. Um, I think uh, uh, just to quick answer. Uh, I think uh, framework has already uh, many kind of like features that are waiting to be to become part of uh, the standards. Uh, like uh, already mentioned, like missing values on a on a field, uh, etc. So there is a, a few like quick wins I think which, which already implemented. I'm not sure Peter uh, can can tell about the R uh, status. Maybe also it's the case for frictionless R. Um, so for this work, uh, we will be delivering uh, this metadata library, which will be fully aligned with the decision made by the working group and uh, uh, then I think uh, incorporation uh, into frictionless will be the next step but uh, to be honest I, I, I don't expect that we you know there is a lot of change like this uh, that uh, not yet in frictionless pie but um, we'll see also uh, I think it makes sense to add that uh, um, as we work on this and on that partnership, uh, I think they have kind of like tendency to continue supporting projects. Uh, if it's, uh, kind of like it's already uh, on their portfolio and and on that, uh, probably we forgot to say, but and on that works on a kind of like future of internet. It's a infrastructure of uh, funding for like security network, and we were selected. Uh, as uh, infrastructure for data sharing, basically. So uh, uh, we will continue working also on, uh, you know, new uh, grants for like other. Um, if 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 yeah, if, if if we don't manage to implement something by the end of this one, and also, um, um, I think um, we need to um, kind of like explore this opportunity that. Uh, and on that also able to fund outside collaborators on grant like grants like this. So maybe the next one uh, will be just you know to fund uh, work outside of open knowledge. They are they are kind of like really open to like a lot of uh, combinations of uh, kind of like mechanics of uh, funding. Peter, I think you were next. Yeah, just reading the, the chat here, and it's establishing a sustainable mechanism for future maintenance extension. Initially, I thought this is about the people aspect, but I think it's about the technical aspect of how to define the specs to do that. And I think we need both. And we definitely need, like, on a technical level, being able to define the specs in such a way that it can be expanded on another more modular, uh, the whole Lego approach. Um, but yeah, I think it is also useful maybe within this project to think about like how are decisions made within to because it's a standard and you kind of want the standard to evolve, but it's still a standard as in it, you kind of want to have it standardized and there's a process, a decision process, which you probably have to write down. And there was some experience we have with um, biodiversity information standards on how to do that. Apache also has experience on how to, uh, um, yeah do this kind of uh, human process on decision-making. So I think it would be really useful to, as part of this project, think about that part too. So that after the project, it is more clear how changes can be made and when is there a need for a consensus, etc. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Um, Phil, you're up next. So yeah, just briefly, um, I mean, I, I agree with, virtually everything that's kind of been said here, and it's rather exciting. I, I do think that, um, or at least it seems to me, that the more structural changes to the way in which the um, specs are sort of um, handled, maintained, those kinds of things, at, in other words, at a higher level, um, are that's a slightly different level than I think a lot of the things that, that are now, you know, languishing in issues and and little suggestions and so forth. And I don't think that necessarily means that both of those can't be addressed in a subsequent update, 
but I, and I'm not sure that they necessarily are inconsistent either, but that might be a useful way to think about sp splitting some of the work. And I do think it might be useful uh, to, to maybe see if we could establish some consensus on if those two things um, do come into conflict, even if just, you know, in the short term, which one of them is going to prevail just for the purposes of actually being able to move forward. Um, I mean, it seems to me that that at the higher level, some of those changes are things which may not in the short term bring some of us who make a lot of use of of what we're talking about, you know, a lot of benefit, but are going to have much, be much more valuable down the road in terms of, you know, adoption and so forth. And I, I would argue that that those probably are more important to get right initially. They're also much harder to change if for some reason you get it, them wrong. The other thing I would just say briefly is, you know, I, I think that um, I know there's just some fantastic stuff written and I've, I've, I'm still finding things that have been written. And so please don't misconstrue this comment to suggest that that I'm I'm dumping on what's been written. But I do think that, and some standards bodies, I, I think, do maybe too much navel gazing and far too much writing. But I do think it would be very good to actually articulate in written form uh, some principles sort of at the outset. Um, one, just to make sure we're all on the same page. And two, so that then that can be provided to the community um, you know, to really kind of justify what's been done and, and how they think about it and so forth. It's much harder to construct that after the fact. And sometimes it's not as good when you construct it after the fact. So, um, and I, I certainly would be willing to, you know, to the extent that I can help contribute to some of that. Um, but I think, I think having some, some more of that uh, would be, would be really helpful. Yeah, thanks, Phil. And very good suggestions as well, duly noted. We are at the top of the hour, so I want to be mindful of so everyone's time. Um, Evgeny, do you want to say something? Um, yeah, I also want to say, yeah, I think it's it was an hour, so uh, just uh, to think about like next actions, uh, what do you think if we um we create a uh an issue on github uh describing um all this what we discussed and what will be next and uh sarah um uh, i guess you will be um uh, uh, kind of like working on the working group uh members but uh because uh, it 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 uh, wasn't enough one hour to decide everything. Uh, I'm just you know uh, suggest just we go in, we go to GitHub and uh, finish uh, this uh, discussion regarding forming working group uh, there. Yes, and I think we'll in parallel we'll also be working on a kind of like let's see if it's on GitHub or if it's in the form of a blog post, but like about the roadmap and general planning over arching goal and all that, so that we have everything. Um I mean the best possible option, maybe everything in the same place, but at least in places that you know. Um, so that of course we I mean it's kind of like there um for everyone to see. Yeah, well. That said, unless someone has any other immediate step that they think we should tackle. Uh, this is great. Thanks uh, a lot for organizing this and moving forward. I would say if people have other ideas for things that are really crucial to consider and work with early on, share them in the Slack channel or somewhere so we can think about that. Exactly. Thanks, Keith. No, thank you. Thank everyone. Yeah, thanks everyone for taking the time uh, today. And yeah, let's keep discussing this. Um, and yeah, we'll tackle next steps. So you'll be seeing that soon. Thank thanks. you. Have a good rest Bye -bye. of the day. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot.